the other thing I was going to say regarding like a, a, a applying for a bunch of firms was that it may be that the company that you're working for right now is like the company that's is going to be able to feed you like stuff in the off season. Right. So it may be that you go run cat for somebody else in the summertime and then you come home in, you know, September, October or October, November, December. And from then until April, you're just kind of puttering away at home, just, you know, doing this kind of stuff. Right. Um, which not, not a lot of adjusters do. It is a little bit challenging sometimes because these guys that you're working for may rely on you to do these daily claims and you're the guy, you're Johnny on the spot in this territory. And if a big storm comes along and you take off, then they're kind of left in a lurch unless they, unless you're just 100% crystal clear, transparent with them about what you want to do and you talk to them about it and they're cool with it. Or even they may even say, well, yeah, we've got cat stuff. You know, when that stuff hits, we'll, we'll happy to send you. We can backfill and whatever. Right. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that, um, kind of flipping back and forth between cat and daily, unless it's something that you know that is going to be a smooth experience for everybody, um, because it can leave companies in a lurch. The good news is, and this is something I, you know, hurricanes are a pain in the rear end, right? They're hard to work. Um, the work may not be that hard necessarily, but the environment around them is challenging because you're going to have a lot of PAs. You're going to have a lot of upset people. There may be people who have like lost family, family members or pets or whatever. Their house may be mm. completely gone. Like just it's like there's, there's just sand where their house was. Right. So they're they're They can be a little bit emotional um, and there can be a lot of extra work because with those bigger claims, as you probably know, you know, the, the second the insured is has to can't stay in the house then that kicks off ALE and that's a whole other, yeah. it's like a whole other, it's a whole new claim, right? It's a whole new process yeah. and stuff to do, right? Well, if you, if the house is gone or it's burned down or it's, you know, it's major fire damage from a wild land fire, then you got ALE, you got other contents, you got, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then maybe you get some condo claims that have all that stuff. And it's like, oh, now I got to go get the CCNRs and I got to figure out the master deductible is, and I got to, you know, and it's, it, there's, they're just, they they're tedious and everybody is like on edge, right? It's been all over the news, right? And they're hearing, people are watching the news and they're hearing these ridiculous news stories about, you know, price gouging for generators and for the insurance companies are cheating and all this kind of stuff. Right. So you're having to walk into all that. Whereas you stay home, right? And Holly Homemaker, you know, had a kitchen fire, you know, or the guy, you know, the husband, you know, he had a kitchen fire, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, or, you know, if a tree limb falls over and like lands on the roof and they're not sure if there's damage or not, but there's, you know, you get up there and there's big scratches on the, that those are easy claims. Right. And they're, you know, you have to, right. you have to treat every claim as though it's like a total loss. Cause it could feel like that to the homeowner, even if it's just a water spot on the ceiling, but from like a, like a, just a practical, you know, workflow, you know, per perspective, they're, infinitely easier. You don't have like lines to the gas mm -hmm. station. You're not trying to find water. You don't have to go like to the Taco Bell 150 miles away because that's the closest one that doesn't have all the windows blown out. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it's different, right? It's, it's a lot less yeah. stressful just to stay home and everybody else is going to go to the hurricane because they're, you know, they could make $90,000 in a month. Right. And it, it happens, you know, it's one of those things, but if you're the guy that stays home, then you're going to get all their work, right? So you can still, a claim is a claim, right? And you can still make a lot of money, like a, a lot of money staying home and just doing dailies. Um, hail storms and stuff like that, probably not so much because it's not like all hands on deck to go to Dallas uh, or to mm -hmm. Oklahoma City or Mi Minneapolis or whatever. All that to say, you got choices in that regard, but no matter what you want to do or however you decide to do it, um, you have to be like, as clear as possible with the IA firm, what your intentions are, what you want to try to do, and if, yep. if you can do it or not, um, because they, yeah. they don't want to be blindsided with, because they they know if a hurricane hits, they're going to lose a lot of their daily people, no matter what. Yeah. I was very fortunate. The uh, recruiter that called me, um, he was telling me about the opportunities, you know, said, hey, it's, fee schedule's a little bit lower, but you 
don't have to make any um, claim decisions. You know, you're, you're basically going out there yeah. scoping, estimating, and and uh, put, documenting everything. And and uh, it sounded pretty simple, but I told him, you know, full transparency. If I get a cat call, you know, for my family, I got to go take that, right? And he said, yeah, that's. We have several adjusters that that's what they do. They get that call. They go out there. You got to do what you got to do for your family. Uh, but you're helping us out by, you know, open this opportunity here in this yeah. region, which we've yeah. been trying to expand. So it was kind of a perfect storm, I think. Um, so it, it's it's been working out great. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's every adjuster firm, uh, but it seems like every, every manager that I've worked with so far, um, even if they're... I mean, I've had a couple that are, you know, pretty under a high stress and they talk a certain way, but I'm from Boston and, you know, I've worked in kitchens up there. It's, it's the same thing. Just got to get this done. You just got to do it. Why didn't you do it right the first time? (laughs) I'm okay with that, that sort of conversation. Um, And I think some people are taken aback. They take offense to it. They take it personally. Um, yeah, but it's, it's not the no, case. You it's just the, the business. It really is. And, and, and I, th- I people got to understand that the pressure is not just on the adjuster, right? It's on every, every person, the homeowner as well. Right. Cause they're like freaking out. Cause they, they hear all these stories about how the insurance companies are going to cheat them and all this kind of stuff. So they're under pressure. Right. Their high stress levels way up here. Your manager Right. He's, he's, he or she's going to be judged by how productive their adjusters are, which is you, right. Or, you know, whoever the, mm-hmm. if you're watching this, so you have to understand if they, if they snap and they give you an earful or they chew your off on the phone or whatever, it's n- never, ever take anything personally on 100%. a cat deployment of any, of really any, any claims deployment, because you just don't know. Right. Um, it's a, it's a, essential customer service skill to not take things personally, to not think if the, if the, I show up at the homeowner's house and I open the, the and homeowner opens up the door and he's like, what? Right. That guy might've just, it might've just taken him five minutes to get off the couch. Then it, after it taking him five minutes to get on the couch, cause he threw his back out. Right. And he's like excruciating pain. And he's shuffling over to the door and he's like, what? You know, right. you never know. You just don't know. So that's a, and I think that's one of the things that, that will make people like wash out on storms too, is they get yelled at once or twice by a manager who's just like, he's, I mean, you're the 50th person who's called with the same stupid question that you should have looked up, you know, or whatever. You didn't know how to look it up. And, uh, he just, they, they snap on you. Okay. That was all well and good. But what if you haven't even gotten started yet? You're not quite sure, like what an adjuster license is, or even which one or ones to get. You don't know what gear and tools to buy. Do you even need a drone? In short, you wanna know how to get started as a claims adjuster. How can you start adjusting claims? For money, right? We put together a comprehensive seven video series explaining in detail, step-by-step, the complete beginner's guide to getting started as an independent property adjuster. This is where you wanna start. And the best part, It's completely free and you can get started watching it right now at adjustertv.com slash start. In the meantime, YouTube has picked out a special video just for you. See you in the next one.